Welcome into Let's Be Honest. I'm your host, Kristen Cavallari, back with Justin Anderson. Hey. Welcome, welcome. Okay, the audio is working. I have my headphones on. Microphones are plugged that in. That was so embarrassing, the audio last The time. audio was really bad on our last one. Sorry about that, you guys. I, again, like I'm a one-man show over here doing <laughs> everything, and this is not, not ideal. So today, we have a fun episode for you guys. We are going to play Truth or Drink. Um, you can't really see them, but we have shots in front of us here of tequila. It actually feels a little warm too. <laughs> Ew. Uh, I know. I know. That just made and my And literally mouth no chaser. <laughs> like we're just raw dogging this. <laughs> <laughs> so we're really going to want to answer these questions. Um, and so we're just going to have some fun. We asked some listeners or viewers, I guess we should say, to send in some questions. So between us coming up with our own and listener questions, I think this should be pretty fun. We got really good ones. We got a lot of good ones. And we were laughing about it. We didn't tell each other what we're going to ask nope. each other, which I think is the most fun because it's just like really spur of the uh-huh. moment. And we're going to be very honest. Yeah. Um, but they were really funny questions. There were some funny ass yeah. questions. Okay. So do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Okay. I can go first. I'm going to keep um, Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh my God, I didn't put these in order. I need to do it in the right way. Okay, let's have some fun for a second. Okay. Okay. You have to live without shoes with the rest for the rest of your life. So you have to live without shoes for the rest of your life or live in the same house as your ex. <laughs> I don't know why I love that one so much. Guys, I hate shoes. So I would 100% go shoes. I think living at the beach, like I I never want to wear shoes, actually. That's really easy for me to answer. I don't believe you. Like, you can't go on a date night with cute shoes on. You have to show up barefoot. You're all like, don't mind me. I'm just a free spirit. <laughs> like, you could never put on a sexy pair of heels. Again. Red I, carpet and barefoot. I, <laughs> You're just like Jewel. You're like a hippie. <laughs> Says, what is it? Something about hippies. Long live the. Oh my Long god. Live the hippies. <laughs> if if it was that over living with my ex, <laughs> yes. yeah. Well, that's more of the problem. But I'm yeah. like, don't act like not wearing shoes would just be easy breezy. <laughs> You're just out on a hike barefoot <laughs> at the kids' basketball game. <laughs> They're all Grocery bitches dirty. <laughs> yeah, I think about like the airplane. Ew. <laughs> Can I have socks? <clears throat> no barefoot. Oh fuck. I'd still go no shoes. <laughs> <laughs> a little furry pair of socks. Like that makes it better. <laughs> You're just the sock girl. <laughs> Nashville's favorite sock girl. <laughs> oh God. Okay. That's just starting this thing off strong. Okay. Um, all right, let's we'll just go for it. Have you ever gone down on a girl? Yes, I have. <laughs> I definitely have. I don't, I mean, I Like in high school? Like, I am as gay as they come, right? (laughs) But in high school, I definitely did the whole, like, straight guy thing. I had girlfriends all the time. And here's- What did you think when you were going down on a girl? Were you like- (laughs) Okay, I- (laughs) No, I honestly think there's, like, two types of gay guys- many more probably but i feel like there's some gay guys who are like absolutely disgusted by the idea of hooking up with a girl and yeah. there's some that aren't i fall in that category of like i'm not but i don't want to do it now right. as an adult but back then because i thought that was the norm and i was trying so hard to be straight it wasn't gross to me and i'm a people pleaser so i like really oh. made sure i was good at it like i like oh my god i needed to be the best at it like i had a sex in high school so you think you're good at going down on a girl oh 100 percent. but think about it because like if i'm gonna do anything i'm gonna be the best at it and i think that like because i have a lot of feminine energy in me (laughs) i understand also what feels good yeah you know like yeah I don't know. I feel like a lot of guys, like, especially at that Ugh. age, have no idea. They don't know what the hell they're doing. Like, when you hear stories about how guys, like, finger bang for the first time, like... It's, I'm like, ow. Painful. Can I tell you something? I didn't actually have, But you like, can't beat it up. No. <laughs> no, a lot of guys are, like, really aggressive. It's like, you need to be, like, soft and gentle. I mean, there's, like, a time and place for more aggressive. I didn't have, like, good oral sex until I was an adult. I bet, yeah, because I feel like that's something that people really need to practice. But I also remember when I was doing it, when I had girlfriends, I would really listen. I was obsessed. Remember Loveline? We were both obsessed yes. with Loveline. It was yes. a 
show on K Rock, a radio station, was all about sex. Yeah. And I would lay in bed at like 15 with my earphones in, yeah. listening to that. And I remember them, like, they'd have like porn stars come yeah. on and explain how men should do it. And yeah. I like would like listen, like made sense to me. I need that to stuff say help though. That is helpful. Yeah, you, Guys should, like, there was a GQ article written years ago that like really explained how to go down on a girl. And it is like, if you do what it says, like, instantly yeah, you can a make a girl come same yeah. thing with the blowjob like there's to- there's an art to it i mean i remember hearing somebody oh my god you know who explained it one time was lisa rinna and like her book <laughs> i love that and i read something about it but like i was like yeah she nailed it she gives a great blowjob i mean there's an art to it both ways yeah that's true that is true <laughs> yeah. the one thing that i do want to say is like i am very very gay i don't want people to be like Justin and Kristen probably hook up. Like, no, Justin calm down. Goes down I'm on very Kristen. much gay, but like, I was never grossed out by it. I was very much in that. I love that world. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Okay, that was your question was for me. <laughs> <laughs> We're not gonna drink anything. You no, and I. literally. This is a joke. We'll answer um, anything. Oh, I kind of like this for you because I'm actually curious about this with you too. If you could be a guy for one day, what would you do? Whoa, I love that question. Because you're very masculine in my opinion. I am. There's like not a whole lot that I feel like would be different than my life. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Except for actually jerking off. (laughs) I would jerk off all day long. No, I I would. But I would also, um, well, I would want to fuck a chick. Like doggy style. (gasps) You are you know what such I mean? a top. I would just like want to see what it was like. That's like a power thing. Yeah. You know what? There were a lot of questions about because I think the lesbians want you in the community really bad. I've said stuff about lesbians, so they're like, I'm right here. Yeah, lesbians <laughs> love because you have like that strong dom, yeah. but then you're also very feminine. Yeah. So like you would be a lesbian's dream, I think, personally. <laughs> um, but you're not attracted to women at no, all. No, like at all. No. Yeah. Like I like kissed girls in eighth grade and like high school and stuff to like turn the guys on, but I would I the thought of going down on a girl actually makes me like I like get sad. Would you <laughs> I get, let like, her go down scared. on you? I don't think I could. I really I really <laughs> don't. I really don't. I believe it a hundred percent. I mean I, I do. Like, like there's a part of me that, like wants to be this free spirited person and be like, yeah, I could do that, no problem. But like if push came to shove, no, I could never. No, and you'd have no reason to like or I mean no one would have any reason to hook up with anyone they're not well, attracted to. Well I think it's to, just like, like it's uh, it's just like up there's no desire me. like you're never thinking about no, that no I don't yeah. know ever. and you physically couldn't do it <laughs> <laughs> makes sense <Let's> could not <laughs> <laughs> okay that was a good question that's I love that that's what I would do I mean I guess like chop some wood and shit like I don't know that's probably it yeah, I think it's always about sex. It, yeah. I think if I was like a girl for the day, like, yeah. I would want someone to suck my dick. <laughs> oh my that doesn't shock me at all. I'm just glad that you're saying it out loud because I know that about you. Like, I literally, that doesn't shock me at all. Oh my God. I'm a dirty dog. <laughs> I'm the dirtiest guy there is. Okay. Um, okay. This one I got asked all like the number one question have we ever hooked up for fun yeah i got that a lot too like you what is wrong with you people well and chris and i were saying um because we were like we're talking about how that question was in there so much and i was saying like i really think a lot of people don't understand the friendship between a girl and a gay guy Mm -hmm. maybe they had never had a gay friend i understand that if you've never had a gay best friend but there is no sexual chemistry between or there's no desire like at all it would be (laughs) the weirdest thing in the world like i don't think we would stop laughing first of all i would never be able to look at you again no it'd be so freaking weird even if we were like hammered and something started to happen i know for a fact like it could never get there it so would no, never. It, it would never. No, it, it would, literally would never. No, it would be the weirdest. It's a, It'd be like having sex with your sister. Oh, literally, though, you guys, like that is what yeah. it would be like. So. But with that said, like I realize how hot you are, and like <laughs> if I was a straight guy, I would chase you down so hard. I think I can be honest about that. Like if I was a straight man, like you would be my type. Like I think Aww. you're so hot. Like and I always still I'm like, damn, she looks hot. Like, but there's no <laughs> sexual desire. I'm not like, yeah, I'm gonna hit that. Yeah, he's not like jerking off to me. <laughs> <laughs> You wish. <laughs> That's like your dream to, to switch over a straight. You want every guy to be in love with you. That's your dream. Including all the gays. You guys, Justin Ew. won't leave me alone. Oh he keeps showing up at my house. Oh my house. God. 
Did you guys know that you swallow five to 7% of your toothpaste every single time you brush your teeth? That's an entire blob of toothpaste every seven days. Gross. Most commercial toothpastes are filled with harsh chemicals, artificial flavors, and preservatives, not stuff that you'd want to be putting in your mouth, let alone eating. That's why Bite makes dry toothpaste tablets made with clean ingredients. Bite toothpaste bits are so convenient, you just pop these in your mouth, chew it up, and start brushing. It will turn to paste just like you're used to, but with no plastic tube or messy paste. Guys, these things are kind of fun. I mean, they're a little different. You have to get your mind wrapped around it. But once you're used to it, these are awesome. And you guys, if you travel a lot like I do, these are so great. You just throw some of these bite toothpaste bits in your to-go bag and you are good to go. I love these things. They also come in refillable glass jars and they send refills in compostable pouches. So they're better for our bodies and our earth. No more plastic toothpaste tubes. Bite makes plastic-free alternatives for everything on your bathroom sink, from toothpaste, mouthwash, toothbrushes, and deodorant, so you can cut out the harsh chemicals and plastic waste without compromise. Bite's sleek glass bottles and jars look amazing on your vanity and elevate your shelfy game. No hiding gooey plastic tubes here. Bite is offering my listeners 20% off your first order. Go to trybite.com slash honest or use code honest at checkout to claim this deal. That's T-R-Y-B-I-T-E dot com slash honest. All right, guys, listen up. If you have damaged hair, I feel you. And I'm about to introduce you to your new hair repair hero. Introducing the new Kerastase Premier Repairing Pre-Shampoo Treatment. It's a new and unique product that's the very first step when you get in the shower. I actually just learned about this. We all have calcium building up on our hair and it comes from our shower water. This buildup of calcium is amplifying damage, which I know we all have from things like coloring our hair. What's amazing about it is that it actually does two things at once. It removes that calcium buildup while also repairing and reconnecting the broken links between keratin chains. Okay, so here's how you use it. After you wet your hair in the shower, apply the repairing pre-shampoo treatment and let it sit for five minutes and do not rinse. Then layer your shampoo on top and finish with the rest of the Premier collection. I've been using Kerastase for a long time. And when I say long time, I mean like since my teen years, you guys, because the brand is incredibly luxurious and the quality of their products are just so professional. Plus they really work. The new Premier Collection has become one of my absolute faves, and you guys see for yourself. Visit www.kerastase-usa.com and use code HONEST15 for 15% off your purchase. That's www.kerastase-usa.com and use code HONEST15. Standard exclusions apply. Offer valid through 531 2024 you're not going to want to answer this. Okay, let's hear or it. Or you could, maybe a really quick, fun story will come to your mind Okay. Um, that you want to dish. What is your most rude celebrity encounter ever? Oh, that's funny because I had all the same questions for you. Um, well, uh, the rudest? Well, I have a good story for you. Um, it's not necessarily the rudest, but it's definitely, it's a crazy story. And I've actually talked about it publicly, but not in a long time. So when I was... Still in high school. I was a senior in high school. I was 18. But Talon, who was on Laguna Beach with us, moved up to L.A. And um, we would go up and go out with him. So he was, like, kind of hanging out with Lindsay Lohan. And I happened to be sleeping in bed with Talon one night. We had gone out. I was fully clothed. Like, I had a long sleeve shirt on. I remember the whole thing. Yeah, we were just friends. So Lindsay breaks in at, like, 4 a.m. with all her little girl squad comes down into the room, opens up the door, sees that I'm in there, goes up into the kitchen, starts throwing glasses against the wall, like losing her mind. Talon's roommate, Frankie Delgado, who I'm sure some of you know, had to like pin her down and calm her down. So, okay, so that happens. And I'm like, whoa, that was batshit crazy. So I go and do an interview with Rolling Stone magazine. I'm 18. This is like my first big interview. I don't know what I can and can't say. I say the Lindsay Lohan story. Well, (laughs) that's printed in Rolling Stone magazine. So then I'm like, oh, my God, she's going to fucking kill me next time I see her. I was like, I'm so scared of Lindsay Lohan. Next time I see her, she's like, hey, oh, my God, we have to get lunch. And I was just like, 
Hollywood is so fucking weird. But also, like, that's scary to me because that's, like, manipulative. It's, like, because those kind of girls, like, want to get close to someone who they think is their enemy to, like, fuck them over back. So, it's, like, that's, like, a next level kind of crazy. You're, like, bitch, I know what you're doing. Like, you're nuts, man. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, that's that was just, like, a wild story. And that was, like, my introduction to Hollywood, too. So, I, I think that's honestly why, like, I never got close to any real celebrity girls because I was always, I didn't trust them. I was always a little freaked out I was like it's such a user manipulative gross world so that's interesting I think that like opens up another topic because I think that like you weren't friends with a lot of girls in Hollywood and you never did that whole thing because there was a time when like all those Hollywood girls I knew everyone and we would like go out but I didn't want to like hang out with them all the time but what I'm getting at is you had a reason for it because I think that a misconception that a lot of people have from the outside is that you're like a guy's girl like you're always with Mm. men but you have really close friendships but they're real and they're kept quiet it's not about Hollywood and being seen or whatever (laughs) that's like friendships in Hollywood not all of them but a lot of them are like it's everything's to like garner more attention and I wasn't I wasn't gonna subscribe to that like I'd rather have like real good friends that I can trust and count on than like that kind of Lindsay Lohan shit and you have to be careful with it like you don't know what they're gonna do with the info that you share with them it's just you can't trust a lot in that arena right such a gross place to be okay so same thing with you because you had a lot of celebrity clients who was the rudest client that you ever dealt with oh my god (laughs) um you've got some good stories I do have a lot of good stories, and I'm not trying to be a cop out. I know. It's just that, um, okay, here's my thing. You can drink if you want. (laughs) I'm going to drink because I think it's tacky when people in my position, I mean, anyone who doesn't know who I am listening or whatever, like I did celebrity hair forever and really big celebrities. Mm -hmm. So, of course, people are going to ask me that all the time. And maybe one day I'll write a book or one day I'll do like a tell all or whatever. But I think at this point in my life, I think it's tacky when people in my position, like if I was collecting money from these women because that was my job to do their hair and stuff, and then I now told stories about them, that's not fair. Like that's their privacy. But I'll talk about the great people forever and I can give hints on bad people. Yeah. But, so no, I can't say like a specific I person. I didn't think you would. I agree. I mean, you've got more class than that, which I think is, a, <laughs> it's a good thing. <laughs> is that a warm tequila shot? <laughs> I don't even know why I didn't make that a big deal at all. I was just like, I was doing a quick one. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. That is great. <clears throat> I'm proud of you. <laughs> Okay, I think it's your turn. Oh, because you doubled off uh, mine. Yeah. Oh. Well, I, that was on my list. Oh, uh, yeah. oh okay, cool. So two for one. Okay, <laughs> two, okay right. Um, okay, what is your... I've actually never heard you say this, so I'm interested. What is your most embarrassing sex story? Oh. <clears throat> okay, I can't even on. think of one for me, so that's not one that usually... I don't get embarrassed very easily. Um, embarrassing sex story... Hold on, I gotta actually like think about that. Um, I mean, <clears throat> I don't really like. Ha- I don't have a lot. I mean, have I? Um, like I've queefed sometimes. But <laughs> <laughs> I was just drinking water as you said that. <laughs> why? Why were there so many questions about queefing? So queefing's real. Yeah. So it's an air bubble in your coochie. <laughs> That you just have to let out? Because it's clearly not gas. It's this air. Is, this is what happens. The guys push air up into it. Usually happens <gasps> doggy style. <laughs> oh, that happens with gay guys too. Oh, okay. But in yeah. the butthole. But we don't call it a queef. We, we call, call it a fart. fart. <laughs> <laughs> is that what that is? Oh my God. So yeah, it's like, it's usually doggy style if you're like taking it out and putting it back in. Like yes. That. And then, and so like, yeah, when I was younger, I'd be like mortified. And now I'm just like, huh. It's like par for the it's, course. Yeah. And also like, I, I just want to be like, you know, that was a queef though, not a fart, right? Like, can we just like establish that? I'm like farting. But when you're younger, I think it's really funny when that kind of stuff happens to a guy. But I feel like now people like now understand. It's like, it's we like get that's it. how the body works. Also, the guys are the ones responsible for doing You're all, you did that. You did this. <laughs> you know what you did. <laughs> you know what you did. Oh my God. Uh, okay. That's a good, that was a good question. Um, but yeah, I don't have anything like. That, I mean, I've also had sex where it's like started my period and I'm like, oh my God, there's like blood everywhere. I'm like, sorry, I literally didn't know. G- guys don't care though, guys right? Guys don't, I, I have They don't care. Guys, they just do it. They do not care. Yeah. Guys don't care. Um, <clears throat> okay, here's a good question that I don't know the answer to. So as a gay guy, you obviously take it up the bootylicious. So do you guys put sex toys up your butt? 
And if you do, what age did you start doing that? <laughs> oh my god. I feel so bad because Scoot is so private. <laughs> right, like right, I right. would talk about <clears throat> anything. Like I will talk about anything. I do think about Scoot because he's so private. Yeah. But I don't think he would care about this. I don't take anything in my butt. Right. So like um I, I and not I'm just not You're interested. You're a top. That answers I'm a top. another one of my yeah. questions. Perfect. So like in the gay world, there's like usually a top and a bottom and I'm 100% a top. And I want to say that I don't think that being a top is the powerful position mm -hmm. or like that doesn't mean that I'm the more masculine role because some, oh because that's interesting i do take it like that yeah no mm -hmm. because some bottoms are like you can be like a power bottom like they're like oh. really masculine and they just want to like take it in the butt oh, or whatever okay. so i just like to point that out because sometimes people always think like oh so that's the feminine one mm. and not necessarily that doesn't offend me in our relationship i'm definitely the more masculine yeah. i'm just saying it doesn't always mean that um so i do not take it in the butt <laughs> But here's a funny story about that. Yes, yeah, so there is a thing. There's a whole art to anal sex. There just is. Well, can you, you give me some pointers? Because I don't like it. Okay, <laughs> you have to. Like, Scoot and I. Oh my God, he's going to be so. <laughs> We've been together for 10 years and we are very sexually active. We very much enjoy it. We still have amazing <laughs> sex 10 years in. And um, we've never had a bad situation yeah like, like a, a poopy situation never not once that's phenomenal and that's because scoot is there's a whole art to it you know you have to know with like when you've ate and then there are tools that you can yeah. prep yourself yeah. and scoot's very big on prep uh, we, taking we care we of that prep. situation mm -hmm. um but in order to sometimes get your butt all ready <laughs> Die. Scoot. Oh, yes, there are toys that you can use. And oh, Scoot's thing, okay. um, he uses a big fake wiener, a dildo, basically, oh, right? Oh, really? Well, there's this one that he has that you can suction cup onto the shower. Yeah. I showed you this. Yeah. And I thought it was so funny. It's a huge wiener, you yeah. know, like because it's like you want to get yourself prepared yeah. for it to happen or whatever. And I'm hung. So, like, he has to get it ready. <laughs> like, you use something a little bit bigger than your partner's or whatever. Oh. So, it's this big uh, fake wiener. And I thought it was so funny. I was going on a work trip. I woke up really early to go to the airport and it was in the shower so I stuck it up on the top of the shower so it was just like hanging on the shower and I thought he would get in the shower in the morning and see it like stuck up on the wall he didn't shower that morning because he just went to yoga and our housekeeper came in and she found it in yeah. the bathroom and we have the same housekeeper yeah. <laughs> um, Wendy and she is uh bless her heart the sweetest person on earth she brings a bible to our house sometimes I mean, so no, she's literally. she's very very conservative like that but she laughed she, she did laugh she came out scoot was like i am mortified i am so sorry and she kind of laughed we're for sure the only gay guys that she works with you 100%. know um and we're so close with her now like i t we talk to her all the time or whatever but uh she's gotten to know us very well oh my god that is when you guys told me that i was dying because like, you know when Wendy. like she's so, she's so sweet and, and like, like soft yeah and sweet. And yeah yeah i'm sure it was like traumatizing for her um was that my question yeah, i asked you yeah okay here's a good one you might get mad at me and take a shot <laughs> um but i feel like everyone wants to know at this point but um because it's kind of been hinted at okay have you gone on a date with Glenn Powell, yes or no? You got this as a question? A lot of really? them. That's why I kind of had to ask because there were so many of them. I think you could or I think you're allowed to tell the story of the whole thing how it went down. At this point, no. I can I think do whatever the fuck I want. It's Woo! just a matter bam, bam, bam. <laughs> Yeah, mama. That's slug girl. I'm an independent woman. But I just um I, it just gets to a point where it's like, I don't need to be name dropping guys all the time. I understand. You know, that. it's also like, I don't want to be like the Taylor Swift of podcasts. Like, uh, well, calm down. <laughs> don't use her name like that, I'll please. Cut that out. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but like, I don't. I'm uh, I don't want like guys to be afraid to go out on a date with me and then be like she's just gonna talk about it on the podcast which is so interesting that you even have to think about that but it makes total sense and we were saying before because I was like wait Kristen how much can I ask you about like celebrity mm -hmm. things because that was a lot of the questions yeah. and the thing is like you're not afraid to tell the stories the issue is then it becomes a, a, it beca a headline I don't want to have to see it plastered all over the tabloids and then because then also like I don't want to have to drag Glenn through the mud or like whoever it is and so I just sometimes feel like, yeah, it's better to just left to just to leave some things left unsaid. So I'm going to take a shot. <laughs> no, no, she didn't do that. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. My God. <clears throat> my God. <clears throat> OK. Okay, that was a good one. OK, my turn. OK. Fuck, Mary kill. Jay, Steven and Tyler Cameron. 
for me? Oh, saying it for you. I think like. Yeah. For oh, for me. Well, I'm not helping. I'm not doing anything with any of them. Well, except for Tyler. <laughs> 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 I think Tyler is the hot. Tyler Cameron is. I think the best. We've said this to yeah. each other a million times. <clears throat> yeah. Like, of course, he's so hot. But I remember the first time y- you introduced me to him. Um, I could not believe how good looking a person could be. I know. Like that. He and is the most good looking human on the planet. But and then on so top sweet. of it, so nice. Like, yeah. I really love that man. I think yeah. he's such a good guy. Yeah. Um, okay, so the question is fuck, Mary kill, Jay, Tyler Cameron, and, and Steven. Steven. I love that those are your three. Um, those those are, big, are like who people associate with. Yeah, those me are with. like your yeah. big standouts. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not Morgan Wallen. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> You could throw okay. Them in you want. <laughs> okay, I would um I would marry Tyler Cameron yeah. 100%. Yeah. Um I would like you're debating. No, I know. I would <laughs> No, I just don't want to say the word. Oh, I would fuck Steven. <laughs> but I guess I would. <laughs> that would be my choice. And um I would kill Jay. No shade to anyone. There was a point where I loved Jay so much and I love um, the children that Jay gave us. So I don't want to be <laughs> nasty, but uh, Jay would be out. It's so funny oh. because we are being very honest right now, but there is a party that like thinks about like, okay, you're telling a bunch of people this stuff. Yeah. And this you- is like my actual life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Thank real you people. For Thank you for entertaining us real- with your life. <laughs> yeah, <you're> real people. <laughs> okay. Um, tell us about an actual fight <clears throat> you and Justin have gotten into before. We really have only gotten in like one, I wouldn't even really say a fight, but it was New Year's Eve uh, three years ago. And we were in Florida. I was with someone, you were with Scoot, and then our friend Charlene and her husband were there. So it was like a three couples. And we were at dinner and you were on your phone. And I was so mad that I finally was like, Justin, put your fucking phone down and just be with us. You guys, it was the <laughs> scariest moment of my life to have her snap at me like that because it is true. I feel like we are really good at navigating our friendship. Like, well, we know when we're going too far with things or we're just mm-hmm. very considerate of each other. Like, we really are. Like, we yeah. do not fight. But I remember when that happened, it, it like shook me to the core. I was like, <laughs> oh, my God. But there was this period of my life. And that was, to be honest, like we were in the midst of all the lockdown yeah, stuff. Yeah, that was the height of COVID. Yeah. So we went down. Mm-hmm. We rented a beach house so that we could have maybe some freedom or whatever. Mm-hmm. And... um. I just feel like at that time I was, I was like obsessed with my phone. I was like documenting everything, yeah. but that was a huge wake up call. Cause don't you think I've changed? Yes. Since then? You've gotten so much better. Like since I that. really put my phone away when I'm with people and I never wanted to be that person. So it's not an excuse, but that was our fight. Yeah. I was freaked I was, out. I'm like, it's fucking new year's. We're all here together. <laughs> I was so mad, but you have gotten a lot better since that. And it was good. Yeah. And you know what would have been in our friendship? Like, let's say you did that. And I was like, fuck you. You yeah. look at your phone, too. Yeah. Or like if I got it from the table and left, like I heard it. Yeah. I processed it. I'm like, no, the bitch is right. It's true. <laughs> I'm at a table with five of my friends yeah. and I should be present. Like, why am I filming other things and laughing and whatever? Yeah. Um, yeah. So the fact that like I took it and I like I got it. Yeah. You know? And I was like, Kristen, I get it. No, it yeah. Makes sense. Like, You're thank, really good with thank that. Thank you for calling that out. Like. Because our friendship is more important than, like, me being right. (laughs) (laughs) And you being on social media. Um, Is it my turn? Yeah. Okay. Uh, (coughs) Have you ever had a crush on one of my men? (laughs) Um, I have not. And let me see if this will make sense the way that I explain it. I don't get crushes on people that there's like no possibility of something happening. You know what I mean? That like, makes total sense. Yeah. To like, me. so like me, I think there are a lot of gay guys who like love the idea of trying to ch- turn a straight guy or they like, they, fl- I think there's nothing <clears throat> more cringe for me personally. <laughs> and I'm not saying this in general, but for me, there's nothing more cringe than like a gay guy flirting with a straight guy. I agree. Because I just think it's tacky. I also, so but then also knowing that a guy is straight, I don't even develop those feelings. Even me saying yeah. how hot Tyler is, it's like I can look at him and think he's hot, but I'm not fantasizing. Yeah. Or I'm not like, ooh, I wish he would hold my hand. Yeah. You know, like at all. Like, so there's very much like um, a wall there. So no, I haven't. But I can definitely um, recognize when one of them was really hot. And yeah. Like, and I have to check myself because recently there was somebody who I realized that I thought was so hot and I wanted you to be with him so bad. And we almost got in a fight with it. You actually called me out on it. Like, Justin, you Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was going in so much on this guy because 
I really, in my mind, thought he was so good for you, but I was because I liked him. I liked yeah. his energy. He was like a playful golden retriever. And you did. You kind of like Justin, you actually, got that we voice g- with me. We and got you, a little, this is actually, I wouldn't, again, wouldn't say a fight, but like we had a heated conversation about yeah. it. Yeah. And again, like it made, like when you wake me up like that, I'm like, okay, I need to stop. It's true. Like I am doing that. Like you were like, Justin, stop. You it's wouldn't not- let this one go. Yeah. And I was like, he had gay tendencies and I was like, once I see these things, I can't unsee them. And I'm so turned off now. Like I can't, yeah, he's a good guy, but like, I'm not attracted to him anymore because of the shit that he was yeah. doing and saying and sending to me. Well, and with you, and I think I'm this way too a lot, like you can't change our minds. Yeah. So I don't know why I ever try to do it with you. <laughs> and anytime that I do, I'm like, what are you doing, Justin? Like Kristen's talking like, okay, Justin, you're right. You're right, Justin. I'll keep going out with him. No, that's true. But I do love that we can talk about hot guys. Like, you know a hot guy. And that's fun for me to have like your like your masculinity to also be able to talk about that yeah. with. And we've like way more started to understand each other's type. Like yeah. I, re- I understand your type because I. Well, and the other thing to that question, like I'm, you and I actually aren't attracted to the same guys That's most true. of the time. Yeah, like we have a very different type. Mm-hmm. But lately, you've been like dipping your toe in like some of the stuff that I'm like, wait, that's like who I think would be so hot. It's cute. <laughs> it's fun. Oh my god, it's so cute. Dipping my toe. <laughs> uh, okay, it's my question, right? Yeah. Okay, I want to ask this because it's like nonstop. I also get DMs about this constantly. So it's like, can you just say it or take a shot, which means you don't want to talk about (laughs) it because it is relentless. And I know the answer and I wish the story could be told. Um, Did you ever go out with Morgan Wallen and did you like him at all? (laughs) By the way, stop laughing at ourselves. I know. That is the number one question that I get, too. And I feel like I've, I guess, no, I kind of, like, skirted around the conversation numerous times. Again, it kind of goes back to, like, the Glenn thing. Like, I just don't need to be, like, talking about these guys. I don't know. I'm going to take a shot. Well, I tell the story. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you tell it. I'll get her to tell it one day. (laughs) It lasted a long time. (laughs) Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> You've taken two. Yeah. No, I'm going to start. I was trying to get to this without doing any shots. Dang Same. It. I didn't think I would take any. Okay. Which celebrity facelift scars have you seen? <gasps> That's a good one, isn't it? It's really, really good. I know. I know. You want me to say, maybe we should just start answering for each other. <laughs> so no. then we don't get in trouble. Like that makes it better. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, because that's how it would get written I up know. is you saying it. No one's going to write anything up about me. <laughs> it's not like Us Weekly is like, Kristen Cavallari's best friend, Justin Anderson, used to be a hair color, says that. <laughs> um, no, I've seen all of that stuff. Yeah. And um, I would never talk about that because that is so incredibly rude. But um, I will say that, like, I saw marks and scars on young people that I was shocked, you know? So, like, mm-hmm. there is a lot of work going on in Hollywood, definitely. I have no judgment because I understand that a lot of people do it and, like, whatever. So, yes, I saw a lot of it. But that would be yeah, embarrassing you, if I said You it. couldn't. You couldn't say. Couldn't say. But it's a damn good question. <laughs> <laughs> it's joked. <laughs> <laughs> well, I might need to get more tequila. Okay. That's it. Oh, that's my turn. Yeah. Um, oh my god, this is a lot. Like I'm like sweating. I know. I'm li- I'm literally sweating. I think Shut I have sweat marks. <laughs> That's healthy. Do you sweat a lot? Um, I sweat a I lot. I sweat. I'm not like disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, hey, my doggy owners. Let's talk about the farmer's dog. My favorite dog food. The results of switching your dog's food from kibble to fresh can seem like pure magic. When a senior dog starts acting like a puppy again, and the pickiest of eaters can't wait for dinner time, you might think that some spells were cast. But the farmer's dog doesn't use any sorcery or secret ingredients to make their fresh food. Just science. The farmer's dog makes and delivers fresh, healthy dog food. It's developed by vets, nutritionally balanced, and made from real healthy ingredients to human food safety standards. It's the best option for dogs at all life stages because it's not kibble. It's not canned goo. It's just real healthy food. The farmer's dog isn't just fresh, higher quality food. They also send the food pre-portioned specifically for your dog based on their unique nutritional needs. This makes it easy to help your dog maintain their 
ideal weight, which is one of the biggest indicators of a full, healthy life. Dogs at a healthy weight can live up to two and a half years longer than overweight dogs. A fresh diet has been found to have all sorts of benefits from healthier coat and skin to better breath, even easier digestion and smaller, better poops. A healthy diet isn't just important for humans. I have three dogs, a German Shepherd, a Bernadoodle, and some sort of doodle mix. Don't really know because he's a rescue, but all three of my dogs go bananas for this food. I mean, Kona, my German Shepherd, is drooling. Her drool is down to the floor and they gobble it up so quickly. And my kids just love that everything comes pre-portioned out with their names on it. Sailor is basically in charge of feeding all of the dogs and she gets so excited to do it, which is great. Guys, you can get 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash honest. Plus, you get free shipping. Just go to thefarmersdog.com slash honest. Go to thefarmersdog.com slash honest to get 50% off your first box plus free shipping. Let's chat about clothing brand Quince. You guys, my closet was chaotic, crammed with a bunch of clothes, but I always felt like I had nothing to wear the game changer, upgrading to high quality, affordable pieces from Quince. Now I have a wardrobe of luxury essentials that transition from one occasion to the next. And I stayed on budget. Thank you very much. Like 100% Mongolian cashmere sweaters for $50, organic cotton sweaters and washable silk tops. The best part, all Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. By partnering directly with top factories, Quince cuts out the cost of the middleman and passes the savings on to us. Thank you very much. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium fabrics and finishes. I love that. I've told you guys before, but I have some really cozy sweaters from them. I have a great pair of slacks that are awesome for the office. Or if I'm just going to go to a business lunch or something, I always throw them on. They've become my go-to. Indulge in affordable luxury. Go to quince.com slash honest for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash honest to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince dot com slash honest for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. Oh, I like this one because I'm curious too. <laughs> these what are all what? your questions. You know, I wrote all these. <laughs> I actually wanted to You're, say everyone. Did you date Morgan Wallen? <laughs> Ew, now this next question is going to be so embarrassing. <laughs> I actually wanted to read everyone's screen name, but I didn't know if people wanted to be private. But this one is from Anna underscore Pavlovic. You're lying. <laughs> it's, it's my fin stuff. <laughs> no, this isn't even a juicy question. I just think it's interesting. What was your first impression of me? Oh, my God. Um, I got that question a lot, actually, too. I loved you because you're very warm and welcoming and just like it felt like we had known each other forever. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people were like asking like how we first met. Yeah. Like, did we know we'd be best friends right away? Yeah. That's why I picked that one. But um, we've talked about this before. It was like an instant. Like, mm -hmm. it just felt like we knew each other forever. Yeah. Like, whatever. That's a boring story because I've told it before. But I, yeah, no, I do. feel That's why I feel like we're soulmates. And like we <laughs> got a lot closer in the last five years or whatever it's been. But um, we always loved each other so much. We're too much alike. Like, I think I that's where it's like the understanding comes from. I agree. Um, okay. <laughs> What's a red flag for someone that I'm dating? Like a red flag that you would like warn a guy about me? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to be honest. I'm gonna be, be like, honest, baby. Uh, well, she's going to love bomb you. Oh, my God. <laughs> she's going to give you a ton. So accurate. She's going to give you a ton of attention. <laughs> and then I'm going to hate you. <laughs> and she might turn on you really quick. And it's nothing that is evil on your end. You just. Um, I love love. <laughs> yeah, you love love bombing. <laughs> I do love bomb. In a. Uh, in a like excited, healthy way. Like I, you are very excited yeah. about newness, and then I, also you want to be in a long term relationship. But like you, and we just talked about this like just last night, where I was like, about whatever. 
I think you yeah. should pull back yeah. a bit more. Yeah. But you know what I think it comes from? I don't think it comes from a mal- malicious place. It I doesn't. Think you are so confident that also if somebody decides you're not the one for them, you're fine. Yeah. Because you're like, okay, then we weren't meant to be. You're very pragmatic about it. Like, yeah. You're like, Good word. <laughs> 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 I thought we needed to up, up our vocab on this. I like that. <laughs> um, but you, uh, when you know that it's not right, you're okay if someone moves on from mm-hmm. you. You don't take it personally. Like, oh, we weren't a match yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But I don't think a lot of guys like that. And I have seen firsthand how guys fall for you so yeah. i'm like christine you if you're not that into him like don't do that i know don't text him I constantly. Le- so I, le- I well here's what i would say i lead guys on i don't actually think i love bomb guys because i've been love bombed where it's like really like oh my god i see a future with you like yeah, give me yeah, your, yeah. Give me no, a ring like kind. that's different i just like i get really excited like if i start liking someone I'm all in I think because I don't like people very often so when I do I get like really excited but yes then all of a sudden I will flip and be like I'm over him wait can I say something and you tell me if I'm totally off Mm -hmm. base here I think that there might also be a part of you that wants to speed up you kind of want to get to the point yeah like you kind of want to be like could this go somewhere so you want it to kind of work fast and what we were just saying the other day or I was saying to you is like Kristen it's okay to take weeks to figure out if you like someone like see them and then like wait a week maybe go on a date with them again or like wait days to message them or whatever but I understand why you do it because I think you're kind of like, like, let's get there or don't. Exactly. You know? I'm, I'm not going to like put time and energy into something that like doesn't potentially have a future. Yeah. Which I don't, I've always been like that. I probably should chill out a little bit. Um, okay. Let's see one second. Okay. What was the weirdest thing you've ever seen as a celebrity? So like maybe you were in a party situation or on a set Oh and you were God. like, this is <clears throat> wild that this happens in the world that people would have no idea. Um, that's a really good question. I mean, I'd have to think about that for a second. Um, <clears throat> I mean, the Lindsay Lohan thing. I'm, I gotta like really think. I'm not good at like remembering stuff like that. It, unless someone was like brought up a specific person, then I'd be like, oh yeah, this one time. But I don't like have these memories just like stored in my mind. Does that make sense? Um... Well, I guess like my, it's not like one specific thing, but like my biggest takeaway from Hollywood is that people's image is typically the opposite of who they are. So like, if you think someone is like the girl next door, sweetheart, they're the biggest fucking asshole on the planet. That happens a lot. A lot. And so that, I think just like, I wish I could come up with like actual stories for you guys, but that was more, that was more it. Cause I feel like those people are s- trying so hard to control the narrative on their image where like, if you're actually just a real cool person, you're not like working overtime. Yeah. You're not like doing damage control no, all the time. No, you see someone who like to the public presents themselves a certain way and then you see them in like a house party situation. You're like, wow, they're an awful uh-huh. person. The way that they treat other people. That, but I think that happen, could happen in any social well, circle. Yeah. Like the girl who acts <laughs> super sweet at church on Sunday. Same thing, just on a, di- a bigger platform. Yeah, then you see her at the grocery <clears throat> store and she's like cussing out the baggage mm. lady. Literally. <laughs> it's like people do that everywhere, but it does happen in Hollywood. Or in like a lot of musicians are not their music. And that's been kind of a... Oh, another thing about musicians, they always want to play their album for you to the point where you're like, this is so awkward. Why am I sitting here having to listen to your album? Like, this is weird. You know what's so funny is it is so awkward to first of all just listen to someone sing. Have you ever like been somewhere where someone starts singing and you're like, where do I look? Like, I'm yeah, like yeah. this is so fucking weird. Or like, you know, when you have like a friend that knows they have a good voice and they just randomly start singing. You're like, can you please not do that? <laughs> Um, I know, I know, I know. Oh my God. I remember one time there was a singer that I was working on and I was doing her hair and we weren't vibing. I vibed with pretty much all of my clients. Like the people that I've talked about a lot, I did them for their hair forever because we vibed so much. This one client, because there's a lot of people that I did for very short periods of time and I've never talked about them. This one (laughs) client, she's a big singer. She's in my chair and we weren't vibing. Like, I think she was on something. I could not understand what was going on. Like, we weren't communicating and I loved the chat. She was just singing in the chair. But like, 
putting your everything in. And I didn't know if I was supposed to be like, that's beautiful, baby. Like, <laughs> is that like a new number you're working on? Oh but like, cause God. she wasn't talking to me. She was just like oh. in her own world and she was just like singing, but like full force. It was the most oh awkward thing in the God. world. Like as I'm like highlighting her hair, like this is so fucking weird. Oh. Okay. Well, how about people get fucked up? You guys, I've been at like award shows and I've had people like rolling their dicks off on ecstasy who then go and present. And I'm like, how are they doing that? How are they keeping it together? Like, People because a like, lot of creative people can go hard. Also, the Kanye thing at the VMAs when he took Taylor Swift's award, I was right there. I was sitting right there, and I you were. I was right there, and Jack, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, and Jack, my publicist, and I ran into Kanye and Amber. Her, uh, what was her name? Amber Rose. Yeah. In the bathroom, cu- they were coming out of the bathroom as I was going in. They were hammered, and they were like in the bathroom together, probably fucking. And Jack and I were like, "Oh hey, like what?" I mean, they, you were there that I night. I was right there. Did the room go like crickets when that happened? Was it as awkward? I as think it, it was like people were so confused yeah. as to what was happening. You yeah. Know? If you watch it now, it looks like everyone was like, "Is this really happening?" Yeah. Like I think we were just like really confused. Oh my god, I can't believe that. Yeah, I was right there, but like f- he was like, "Fuck." up out of his mind obviously but like so people get like really fucked up <laughs> which i mean i did too back in the day but i never for like an award show or well, something but also like you um party you're never messy no that's you're, true i can hold it together you hold it together yeah. I, I can drink anyone under the table but like i can hang you never get messy no you all i never also the next day i'm like oh my god Kristen, you were so embarrassing last night or you <laughs> said too much like you god. always you always are aware of what's going on yeah. you're not gonna like whatever but a lot of people aren't no a lot of people aren't who's the most famous person i have in my contacts and who is the most famous person you have in yours <laughs> 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 um, mine is I have a lot to you be honest like yeah lot. and I don't, don't want to brag but people are like oh you're you could bragging get, you could I know what name I would give for you um Jennifer Aniston yeah Jennifer Aniston yeah yeah I love her so much when we were talking about celebrities were nice Jennifer is beyond nice like whatever you imagine you want Jennifer Aniston to be she's that much more like she is wonderful it's nice um but yeah I still stay in touch with a lot of my clients I still consider a lot of them friends and for you the most famous person in your phone um Heidi Montag (laughs) that's it (laughs) that's the one I think your most famous um phone number is John Mayer you guys it's John Mayer (laughs) But uh, no, it's Morgan Wallace. <laughs> <laughs> we have to stop. Cut that out. Oh my God. Oh my God. No, guys. Stop drinking. No, I don't. <laughs> but this isn't bad. I mean, whatever. Doesn't mean anything ever happened between us. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho. Okay, my question for oh, you yeah, is, okay. what's a cringe moment you wish you could take back from reality TV? It's like something that's been on camera film that you're like, I wish that wasn't there. Um, I would say so on the hills, they like accused me of doing drugs and stuff. That was definitely not a highlight in my life. That was really fucked up. And I mean, it was like so dark and gross that it was everyone's teams and their lawyers went in because like, you know, there was bribery involved. A producer bribed the girls with a Birkin bag to call me out on camera for doing drugs. That's fucked up, man. Um, and that was like really damaging. So then because... The tabloid world, and at the time, this is before social media, so the tabloids were everything. They piggybacked on whatever the producer on the hills was feeding them. So then, like, I'm on the cover of Us Weekly saying, like, I need to go to rehab. I'm not showering. Like, all this shit. And so... Why did that just give me chills? I know. it was That was a tough time in my life. Um, and so, like, technically, could I have probably sued MTV? 100%. But I was just like, I want it to go away. But that was, that was fucked up. It's so wild because I don't think... I don't know what this feels like, but to have that kind of room like and especially at that time because now there's so much in the media every day that we forget about things yeah. within minutes but i even remember that and it was so weird to me because we were friends at that time but not really really mm-hmm. close like i knew you and so even like people would ask me like is Kristen really in a bad place i'm like no this is has to be a load of shit like I know. she's so normal like that's right yeah. when we met I yeah think. Uh, like, no i had been going to you for a couple years before yeah. that 
But um, so I remember people talking about it like it was a thing, and that yeah. was so blown out of proportion for ratings for the show, yeah, or to get people to go watch the show, <clears throat> yeah. And it's like, but imagine that being spread around the country yeah. about you, and there's nothing you can do about it. At that time, you didn't have Instagram; you couldn't no. go on and be like, couldn't do damage control. Um, and I mean, listen, like I was that was my party phase, but I never felt like I was out of control. I definitely never needed rehab, like. Did I, I, I've done my fair share of drugs. I can easily admit everything that I've done, but it was never something that like should have been called out for that. Yeah. So, and like, I, you know, the girls, that one girl in particular who actually said it on camera, like you're a scumbag. You're a scumbag. I and never, they were doing it for ratings. Like, yeah. they wanted, like it becomes a job and you're throwing someone under the bus for like a job. And what happened was, so we were all in Miami for the Super Bowl and all of us collectively were like, we don't want to go. I was like, I paid my own fucking way to be here. I'm not filming. Like I was going and you guys decided to come. So we all collectively, collectively were like, we're not filming. Like we're all going out. Okay, great. We're all in, in this together. Well, everyone stumbled back and they filmed a scene and I was still out. So that's when it happened. And I'm like, wow. fuck you guys. We all agree to do this together which again listen like i should have shown up to fucking work that was my job i should have shown up i should but have you just trusted done... that they were all in the same boat as you i thought we were but again like and it took me a long time for me to like take responsibility for any of it like should i have shown up yes should i maybe not i what I, I was fucked up that night i was <laughs> <laughs> i went out really late and i was no regrets. having a good yourself. time <laughs> but like so there are things i could have done differently and i think i blamed the producer for so long and when i could finally be like okay well what what did i do to contribute i like took my power back that's why i never think you should blame anyone for anything because then I you're like living that. in that negativity but it was regardless it shouldn't have happened and it was really difficult when i was like 22 probably so wow. yeah anywho <clears throat> okay. Who was the girl that said it? Just kidding. Low. Just kidding. <laughs> Fucking bitch. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is my last question. Do I have good taste in men? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> looks wise, yeah. Thank you. Definitely looks wise. You have. Ch- <laughs> uh, uh, yes, you do. Um, Even that was questionable for a minute. <laughs> I think now you're. I think you've done it in exactly the right way. Yeah. Like, I feel like now you really are, like, if you're going to settle down with someone, they have to have everything mm-hmm. that, like, works for you and for them. Um, so I think that now what you're looking for makes a lot of sense. Before, it was questionable. Yeah. You know, like, the things where you're like, he's so hot. I'm like, oh, my God, we're doing this again. Okay, <laughs> like, here we go. And I just had to go with it because I can't give you that kind of advice because you won't listen. But I think that oh it has God. definitely, um, it's changing. We've gotten better. Yeah, okay. definitely. Okay. Um, All right, last question. Okay, last question. I mean, the amount of people who care about Steven, I'm like... It's insane. It's like, you guys, that was so long ago. Like, do you guys people still talk are, about your high school boyfriend? People were like, does Justin think that Steven is the one? I'm like, what? Oh, my God. Oh my God. Can we move on? <laughs> like, that was high school. High school. I know it was huge for everyone, but it's God. like, think about who your high school... Bo- I, well, a lot of people are still in love with their high school boyfriend. True. Like, that, they still think about them I, all the time. Yeah, You're true. all, I've had 40 boyfriends I've since 40. then. <laughs> um, okay. <clears throat> How the hell did you put up with Jay Cutler for all those years? Because <laughs> it's like you don't want to be a dog, but it's like I know. people like they see it. Here's what I'll say. <clears throat> um. So this is the father. Of the only reason children. I feel comfortable asking you this is because I know that you know how to answer yeah, it with being honest. Yeah. Or whatever. Like I don't think it's like gotcha. <laughs> no, like, oh no. <laughs> what do I say? Um. So he's the father of my kids. I'm very careful what I say about him. I would trust me. I would love to say some stuff. Um, I learned from my mom not to really talk bad. Like she never spoke badly about my dad and that stuck with me. I think that's something that I want to emulate that I've really tried to emulate. And, um, I met him when I was 23 and there are things I put up with at age 23 that obviously I never would now. And I think that's, that's it. And I think you guys can kind of understand it from there. There it is. We'll see you next week, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having us. <laughs> Thanks for playing. <laughs> Bye, guys. All right, we'll see you later. <laughs>